As our networks become more and more complex and we start adding things like rules, port forwards, static IPs, and VLANs, it becomes more and more difficult and very time consuming when we want to change our firewall router to a different model or brand. Starting from scratch can be really time consuming, especially if you have a reasonably complex configuration. So today I want to walk through the basic things that I did to minimize the pain of switching over, no matter what brand of router you're go coming from or going to. If you want to find out more about what I did, then watch the rest of this video. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. And if you find this video useful, please give it a like as it helps support the channel. Recently, I upgraded my internet connection and found that with all the filtering, the IPS, IDS active, that I wasn't able to get the full internet speed from my router that I was paying for. Even after upgrading my hardware, my Sophos router was just not able to handle a gigabit speed. I considered several different options, but ultimately decided to go with the Unified Dream Machine Pro SE, as there was benchmarks out there that showed that it could handle the gigabit speed. My concern was that my current firewall router had a main LAN, two VLANs, some port forwards, a whole lot of static IPs, and it was going to be tough enough to learn a new way of creating firewalls, but the thought of starting over from scratch was not appealing to me at all. After giving this some thought and walking through all the different scenarios, including just starting over again, I realized that there was just a few areas that would cause me the most grief. The first thing I did is to go into my current firewall and take screen captures of every single setting, no matter how trivial in detail, and no matter whether or not I was planning on keeping these same settings. So that I could reproduce the same result, I needed to grab the LAN and VLAN ranges as well as the DHCP ranges so they could be recreated identically in the new firewall to avoid any overlap or things not working as they should. Starting with my main LAN, the DHCP range is 192.168.0.100 to 192.168.0.254. Next, I captured all the static IP addresses for all my devices in the main LAN that I had assigned over time so they could be reproduced. I started with my main network and screen captured all three pages of static IPs. I repeated the same process for the family network, which is a VLAN, so that I can make sure that again everything was duplicated so things were worked the way they were supposed to. Lastly, I got the settings from the IoT VLAN so that I could replicate those ranges as well. Next, I went to the firewall section so that I could capture port forwarding and firewall rules that I had created so that I can replicate their functionality in my new firewall. I won't cover each one, but here's a couple of examples. The first rule is one that blocks IP cameras from connecting to the internet at all. As my cameras are connected to a Blue Iris system, which is on my main network, I do not want the cameras to see the internet or have access to it. So this rule allows me to accomplish this. The second example is a country block rule, which I mainly use to block bidirectional traffic from certain countries. And lastly, as I use a network printer, I need it to work on both the family network, which is a VLAN, and the main network. This rule allows me to connect the printer that resides on the VLAN and allows me to access it from my main network. There are many more, but you get the idea, and that is to capture the current functionality, whether or not it'll be needed on your new firewall. With Unify, part of the initial setup is defining your main network subnet. So that part is taken care of during the setup. Once I got it installed and powered up, all I needed to change was the DHCP range to match my previous configuration and allow room for all the static IP addresses I needed. The next two networks are VLANs and had to be created manually, so I added the family network making sure the gateway address was the same and the VLAN ID was the same. And lastly, that the DHCP server is the same as the original configuration. I did the same thing with the IoT network and set the gateway, VLAN ID, and DHCP to match the original IoT network. The next part was a bit more tedious, but fortunately, Unify makes it easy to set fixed IP addresses by just clicking on the item, going to settings, selecting fixed IP, and then typing the address that you want to use, and then hit apply. I went through all my devices and recreated every IP address that I needed for my main network as well as the ones I needed for my VLANs. 
The last step took the longest, as I had to learn how firewall rules work in Unify. But as it turns out, it wasn't all that difficult and much easier than my previous firewall. As Unify works on a different principle than my prior firewall, I did not need to, as many custom firewall rules. And out of the box, Unify creates many of the standard rules for you. Strangely, by default, it allows inter-VLAN access, so I did have to create rules to block the VLANs from accessing the main LAN as well as the gateway. And I had to recreate the rules that blocks my IP cameras from accessing the internet as well. I don't really do very many port forwards, however I do have one that I use for my Plex, so I did have to recreate that as well. To my surprise, everything pretty much worked as it did before, and I had very few problems with the migration. You always have to do some minor tweaking, but overall it was far less painful than I thought it would be. As you can see from the benchmark, with all the filtering, IDS, IPS enabled, I was able to achieve the speed that I paid for, and I couldn't be happier. Changing firewalls, especially one that you've had for years, can be intimidating. But if you document everything and take it one step at a time, you'll find it to be much less difficult than you imagine. In total, the transition took me a few hours, including having to figure out how to create rules I needed to block inter-VLAN access. I'll be making a future video on the rest of my upgrade, so make sure you subscribe for new videos. Anyway, that's about it for today's video. Please give it a like if you found it useful. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you've recently migrated and what your experience was. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.